Nico Allen Jenkins was born on September 16, 1986, in Omaha, Nebraska. He is the son of Lori Jenkins and David McGee. He was in several mental health treatment centers as a child, after witnessing and even being a victim of various traumatic situations before the age of eight. At that time, he underwent psychiatric evaluation at the Richard Young Methodist Hospital, where they collected details regarding the events that occurred in his home and that were responsible for his traumas. Nico suffered abuse, violence, and was also exposed to drugs. In the records of the same hospital, it is said that Lori Jenkins, Nico's mother, was aware of the situations to which her son was exposed. He suffered from anxiety and had several nightmares due to the things he was experiencing at home. It was also found out that he suffered from nocturnal neurosis, which is when a person cannot control the earring during sleep. Nico's IQ test indicated that he was far below average for his age. At the age of 11, he started getting involved with gangs and started carrying a gun. He was even expelled from school several times on other occasions for numerous reasons, from vandalism to fights, and stopped studying in the seventh grade and placed in an orphanage after he was caught with a shotgun inside the school. He was held in detention centers from 11 to 17 years old. Before he even turned 12, Nico had several accusations against him. Among those charges were five counts of theft, one count of arson, one count of illegal possession of a weapon, and two counts of criminal fraud. At the age 17, he committed two armed vehicle robberies and ended up being arrested for it. On November 17, 2003, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for these two crimes, starting his sentence in a juvenile prison where he maintained his hostile behavior and received several detentions for misconduct, even wounding other inmates and trying to evade officers. He was transferred to an adult prison in February 2006. When questioned, he denied that he had any concerns about his mental health. In August 2006, he had time added to his sentence for an assault he committed while in juvenile detention. In January 2007, he got into a fight and was sent to solitary confinement and claimed he was depressed and had angry, melancholy thoughts. After coming out of confinement and talking to a professional, he said he was feeling much better. In February 2007, just a month later, Nico got into two more fights inside the prison and again, he was sent to solitary confinement, where he stayed until April 2008. There are reports of him saying that he would start killing innocent people when he got out of prison and that he heard the voices of gods. This was becoming more and more frequent. In November 2008, he was diagnosed with an antisocial personality disorder and refused treatment. A month later, he showed that he was adapting well to living with other people. However, on several occasions, he reported a desire to kill when he got out of prison and was even sent back to solitary after they found a toothbrush with a sharp handle among his things. In May 2009, he went on to report that the voice of the god Apophis ordered him to kill. Apophis is the god of chaos in Egypt and is represented as a giant serpent. After another review, experts said that he was more manipulative and criminal than mentally ill. To them, Nico was someone who was fully aware of his actions but who knew how to fake it very well. The reports continued and a new assessment was made. This time, the diagnosis was different. Experts said he suffered from psychosis and bipolar type schizophrenic disorder. With that, he began treatment with medication and went so far as to say that the voices in his head had subsided. However, he did not want to continue treatment for long. In December 2009, Nico received a leave of absence to attend his grandmother and tried to flee. In this escape attempt, he threatened and assaulted a correctional officer, later claiming that the voices in his head told him to do so and that they had control over him. The same doctors decided to do a reassessment. This time, they reported that Nico was using those symptoms to avoid a legal conviction and that his behavior did not match the previous diagnosis. He was convicted of attempted escape and assault charges. He was later analyzed again by other specialists who diagnosed him with bipolar schizophrenic disorder and said he had severe episodes, that he was antisocial, impulsive and obsessive. They even described his thoughts as delusional and paranoid. For posing a danger to other prisoners and himself, on July 19, 2011, he was placed in solitary confinement, spending two years in isolation. During this entire period, he asked to be transferred to a place where he could receive mental treatment. With just a month to go before his release, Nico had totally changed his behavior. He no longer mentioned his desire to kill people and even went so far as to say that he was no longer hearing the voice of the god Apophis. He was reviewed again by doctors, who said they found no problems with his mental health. 
prior to his release, Nico's own girlfriend sent a letter to the prison asking them not to release him due to his mental issues. However, even so, on July 3, 2013, Nico was released from prison and, as was to be expected, the worst happened. On August 11, 2013, just 12 days after his release, he killed two people. The victims were Jorge Carriga Ruiz and Juan Uribe Pena. They were lured to a place called Spring Lake Park, thinking they were going to meet up with two of Nico's relatives. However, when they got there, both were shot in the head. After committing the crime, he went through the victims' pants pockets and stole the money they had. On August 19, 2013, eight days later, Nico committed another crime. This time, the victim was a man named Curtis Bradford, who had been his cellmate. It is said that in prison, Nico called him my little brother. With the help of his sister, Erica Jenkins, Nico lured Curtis, calling him to help them in a robbery. First, Erica shot him, and later, Nico executed. On August 21, 2013, Nico made his fourth victim, 33-year-old Andrea Kruger, a mother of three who was returning from work. She was taken from her vehicle by Nico and shot multiple times. After that, he got into her car and left the scene, with his accomplices following him in the car behind. They later abandoned the victim's car and tried to set it on fire, but didn't succeed. In just 10 days, Nico took the lives of four people. On August 30, 2013, exactly one month after his release, he was arrested again. He pleaded guilty to all the crimes, but said that the responsibility was on the Nebraska prison system that released him despite knowing he had mental problems. He went on to say that he did everything he did at the behest of the serpent god Apophis. Because there are still doubts about his mental condition, the sentence took almost four years to come out. During this time, bizarre things happened. In 2015, Nico needed 27 stitches in his genitals after self-mutilating himself in an attempt to look like the god Apophis. This only a few weeks after having engraved the number 666 on his forehead, known as the Mark of the Beast. The numbers were reversed on his forehead due to him not realizing the mirror effect. He also tried to cut off the tip of his tongue to make it look like a snake's, but it didn't work. Even more bizarre is that a 46-year-old lawyer named Don Arguello fell in love with and decided to marry him. When questioned, she went so far as to say that Nico is an enigma, that he is quite manipulative, but that he has feelings, is sensitive and very intelligent. After four years of examination and analysis, he was finally considered mentally capable to be tried as a criminal and not a mentally ill person. The judge said the decision took into account the defendant's violent history and lack of remorse, and that the death were coldly planned, and that crimes were coldly planned. In May 2017, Nico Jenkins was sentenced to death penalty. He was also sentenced to 450 years in prison for carrying a weapon in connection with the crimes. Upon receiving his sentence, he had no expression or reaction and remained quiet as if nothing had happened. This was the first death penalty imposed in the state of Nebraska since the sentence was reinstated into the penal system. His sister, Erica Jenkins, was sentenced to life in prison and sent to Women's Correctional Center in Nebraska. Their mother, Lori Jenkins, accused of helping them, received a 10-year sentence and was sent to a federal prison. On April 20, 2020, Nico Jenkins tried to file an appeal with the Supreme Court, but they refused to hear him. He has tried to take his own life in prison numerous times, but to no avail. Today, he awaits his execution on the death row in a Nebraska state prison. Well, folks, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching me until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.